Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are installing a pattern maker's vise in my bench because my bench doesn't have enough vices. Kind of like me. So my bench has four vices on it, but as we all know, four is never enough. So I found, I found, that thing. Now this, this is my dream vise. This is a pattern maker's vise that will do everything and anything, and it will do them all at the same time. It's just like the most amazing vise that has ever been made. The problem is, it's big. It is way too big for my bench. So I found hmm, this little guy, which I mean, it's not all that little, but in comparison, it's very little. This one will work. So the two problems with the other one is number one, the arm was too long. It would come out the end of the skirt, or if I put it on the ends, it would run into the stretcher. This one's short enough, it'll do that. And I can't just like put a hole in the stretcher because this needs to pivot and swing. So um, I need all that space. So if you've ever seen anyone mount these, um, and if you wanna see a good video, on it, Acorn to Arabella has one, um, and they actually mount the front of the bench flush with this. And that works okay, but that means that all of this jaw sticks out past the front. And if you look at the original drawings, they actually have this jaw recessed into the bench. And that's what I want to do with this, so that this face is flush with the rest of the bench. Actually, just proud about a sixteenth of an inch. So, to start with, we're going to flip this thing upside down and mark out its footprint. And I'm going to start here with the back of this, which is the thinnest point. So I know I can take all of this down to that thickness. And at this point, I'm kind of thinking, hmm... I don't really like chopping into my bench, but I guess I'm going to have to. <laughs> so we're going to run around this outline and take this all down about a quarter inch into this. And uh, it's actually kind of fun chopping into your bench because it's a really solid thing. You don't have to hold anything in place. You don't have to clamp it. You just go to town on it. Flip the chisel upside down, bevel down, and you can go to town taking it down most of the way. Uh, and I ended up having to do three or four passes to get down to full depth. And so you chop out the waist, come back in and cut in the outside edge to cut a stop cut and go back and do it again thicker and deeper. 90% of this project is just going to be chopping in and then paring out and then chopping in and paring out. Um, and we're gonna have to take out some large chunks in the front end of this and then some space underneath for it to go in. Uh, pattern makers vices were intended for slightly thinner tops. Um, pattern makers often didn't have a really heavy top or they'd have one bench with a smaller top and then one bench for chopping and chiseling on. Um, I came in with the router plane. It works pretty well for most of this, but the mortise was actually a bit wider than this could do. So thankfully I've got another one that I made in a live video not too long ago. And that one can reach in a good bit farther. Uh, I'll show you that one here in a little bit. Now this front edge, I've got to take that down a lot farther. The back edge just needs to go down to that thickness. Um, so I don't really worry about being messy up front. Um, but at the back, I'm getting close to my line, so I want to take a little more time. The whole front edge with that walnut trim is going to have to come off, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Here's the larger, longer router, and I made this one off-centered so I can have a large reference surface. And I can take it all down to this exact depth. And then I'm going to take the front edge down to it and then pair back in a little farther. And then that allows me to bring that edge down a little bit farther and I can kind of work that reference edge back farther uh, rather than just trying to eyeball the full distance of it. Um, taking it chunk by chunk, slowing down, and, uh, and, and sneaking so, up on it is really the name of the game. Um, I can, I can have some bits of it go a little bit deeper, but nothing can be higher. So it's all got to be on the average of that. And I wanted this actually to be a little bit below the average edge of the bench and that way I can come back and adjust it later. I want to have a really nice tight fit. And so the name of the game is going to be put it in, check it, take it out, go a little bit farther, put it in, check it, take it out, go in a little farther. In this case, I need to go in a little bit farther on the front so that the front jaw can fit in. And I want to leave a little bit of a gap there because I want that front jaw to actually recess into the face of the bench a little bit. After doing as much as we can with the bench up like this, we're going to flip the bench down on its side and then we can start cutting in on this face. And I'm going to be using my big cross cut teeth. It's just a cheap saw from the big box store for big cuts. It actually works out really really well for that. And we needed to remove a huge chunk of this for the main body of the saw to fit in. And so we're just going to start working down and popping out these big pieces. And this is actually incredibly fun. I rather enjoy this point of, of coming in close to the line um, and just popping out large chunks. You just need to be careful of the grain. Make sure it's running in the right direction so that you don't dig in too far. If the grain is running the wrong direction, then it's going to blow out. And here we're going to be um, coming in at a bit of an angle. This uh, walnut needs to splay down until it almost gets to the white oak. 
and then we need to take the white oak back a little farther. We also need a long slot uh, for the, um, the, the screw to fit down into. And up by the front, there is a larger collar, which is circular. So I drew out basically the circular shape and then came in and cut at an angle. And then I can come in with the chisel and remove most of this. And because it's circular, that means I need a big gouge. Um, I could do this with a smaller gouge, but hey, I've got a big gouge, so I want to, might as well use this one. And I could have done a little bit of sharpening on this, but I was going to be pounding on it, so I let it go, get a bit dull. And uh, that is okay. Um, anytime you're going to be really wailing on a tool, um, you don't want to have an incredibly sharp edge on there. You want to have something that's a little bit more um, forgiving. That means you're going to have to pound a little bit harder, but that's okay. And you can see the shape kind of coming out on this. We're going to be taking off the corners, riding that bevel down so the chisel's coming back in at an angle, and I'll be pounding the back. That drives it down into the surface a little bit better, and it allows you to clean up those edges as you run down them. And then, of course, we can put it in and check it and go back and forth. And I ended up going back and forth with it, in this case, like three or four times. I want to make sure that fits in so that large collar um, has space to rotate in. Now that I can fit it most of the way in, I need to actually cut a slot into this all the way back for the screw to go in. Uh, that needs to be about an inch deep into the, the back of this, all the way down to that point across the back. So I'm going to be using a saw to cut in across the grain and get it relatively close, um, and then I'm going to come in and remove the waste from the chisel. Uh, more of the same. It's kind of like uh, been here, done that, but we're going to keep on going. But uh, I want to make sure that this is indeed going straight back from the edge, as I was just kind of eyeballing it with a saw, and then I can mark out the other side of it, and then we can come in with the saw mark in between the two, and that just makes it a lot easier to pop out those uh, those chips. Now, I'm not going to be able to cut all the way across, so I'm kind of cutting at a diagonal, um, down as far as I can on the front, and then back as far as I can on the other side. And so the first few chips can go down almost all the way to depth, uh, but as it goes back farther and farther, it won't be going quite down as far. Uh, because it's only an inch deep, it uh, there isn't that much you can take out. Then we're going to flip it back over, and I want to actually mount this semi in place. And so that means I'm going to have to put a couple temporary screws in here to hold it down. And this can will allow temporary? me to, to um, swing it back in and, and check the, the fit underneath. Um, these two bolts will actually be long through bolts that have to go all the way through and go on the other side. And the center one is just a, a wood screw that goes into it. And then I need to remove a little bit more as this whole head needs to be able to rotate. And so if it rotates, that means it's going to be running into chunks of the bench. So we're going to go back and forth. And this is a whole lot of just going back and forth and back and forth. Where is it rubbing? Where does it need a little more work? Checking it in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, I probably put it back and forth a good 15, 20 times until I got a nice tight fit on it. And at some point it works. And I need to do a little bit more fiddling, but I can do that once it's all mounted and in place. And I can just get to a point where I can be happy with it and then move on from there. But uh, yeah, that point of getting happy with it, that's going to be different for everyone. The big thing I was running into on this one is I wanted it to be recessed in about a 16th inch. So in the future, I could put a piece of leather in there if I wanted to. I'd rather have it recessed ever so slightly into the bench than having it stick out. Uh, because I can always fill it with a piece of leather to bring out that distance. Um, or I can uh, work with the, the bench. Um, I don't want it sticking out because I want to be able to join long boards that reference the whole bench all the way along it. So from this point on, it's just a lot of little details. I'm trimming off little bit by little bit. I want to get it as tight as I can, uh, but I still need to have the full time. swivel movement. And so I'm going to be going back and forth, put it in place, check it again, put it in place, yeah. check it again, take off a few shavings, put it back in. And uh, it, it took a while. I probably spent about uh, a good... 45 minutes to an hour really detailing this in and spending the time to to fiddle it all in place. But eventually we, we get there and uh, it's actually a very pleasing moment when, oh look, it actually fits in and swings and rotates and wow, um, <laughs> pleasing, happy. So now we actually have to mount this. And it's not just these screws on the top and the front, there's also a bunch of hardware that goes underneath so that you can lock this at any particular angle. And like that, we can put the bench back up and start doing the actual mounting of the vise in place. Yeah, um, the bench is heavier than it looks, which is a good thing, but it's <laughs> probably not as heavy as I want. Uh, the bench is only about five foot long and only 20 inches wide. Um, but for the shop space I have, that works. Um, if I had a bigger shop, I would want a bigger bench. And then I could use the bigger vise. But for right now we use this one. Someday I'll make the dream vise and dream bench, but uh, until then, 
until I have the dream shop, we'll work with these. Now, everything, I'm going to be pre-drilling it ahead of time. I don't want to be splitting out the wood. I want it to have a good, solid connection. So pre-drilling is the name of the game. And most of them are going to be held in with simple screws, um, but the two big holes are actually going to have bolts that go all the way through with a nut underneath. The engineering that went into these things is, is surprisingly um, robust. <laughs> Not just in having a big, heavy, beefy uh, no, vice, it's actually like the it. way it connects and how it all goes together is incredibly surprising. For the bolts that have to go through, we have to drill a quarter inch hole uh, for those heads to slide all the way down and then enough space for the nuts underneath. The ones that came for this um, actually weren't quite long enough because it's intended for a slightly smaller bench. So I had to, ended up getting uh, larger like bolts uh, to go into it. And then I found out that those larger bolts didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So that means we're going to come back in and recess the holes so that the, the nuts can fit up into a smaller distance. So effectively making the bench thinner with the bolts go. provided. So six of one, half dozen another. Um, I probably could have gone to the store and gotten the correct ones, but in the end I just decided to work with the ones that came with the kit because those came with the kit. Yeah, I had a good bit of fun oh, no, trying to get the washer and nut up in there, and I thought, oh, I'd be smart putting them on the end of a magnet, but there's this big hunk of steel around it, and those just ended up popping off. Um, so I ended up balancing them on the tip of my finger to get up in there until they were in place and tightened yeah. down. And uh, it was very um, satisfying once I actually got those in uh, the hole. It would have been much easier if I didn't have to recess the hole. But yeah. hindsight's 50-50. Yeah. Probably should have gone to the store and gotten the correct ones. Everything else is a screw. And this one I want it to go in at a bit of an angle uh, because um, I want it to, to seat back against the back of this. I had a hole pre-drilled for another screw, but I actually had to move this whole thing back about an 18th there inch. There we go. Um, so it made a little more space. This is another bracket that goes underneath, and this bar coming off from the head, uh, that will allow me to lock this vise at any angle out from the bench face. So if the bench face is 90 degrees vertical, I can bring it all the way up to 180 degrees and make it parallel with the ground and perpendicular to the face or anywhere in between. And that bar will allow me to lock it back and forth. Then we can put the handle on here, and just like that, this is done and ready to play with. So let's actually take a look at what all is in this thing. That is the wrong screw. So why exactly do I need another vise? Now I'm going to go into more detail on this in another video, but basically this is a pattern maker's vise. A pattern maker could do anything. Uh, this has standard dogs, like you would expect, but it's got four of them. So you could actually clamp something round between them. So I can have something round in the middle that clamps it. And then not only can I keep these parallel, but I can move this and I can actually put an angle in there. So if I want to clamp something with a wedge, I can clamp down on the wedge. And if changing the angle wasn't enough on there, you might occasionally have something that has a compound angle. So you can put in this vise and this will rotate up and down so you can actually clamp something with a compound angle. Now if that's not enough, then you can actually loosen this up and you can rotate this and clamp it at any particular angle. So if you want to work on something at some weird angle, you can do that up and down, as well as you can clamp it here and then you can actually bring it up a little higher. Also, you can clamp it up here and then you can rotate the head and now you can work on it at other angles like that. And I can even bring this back down and work on something of this nature. Then I can rotate even farther, and I've got these jaws that I can use at any particular angle. And then on top of that, we still have the rotational force and clamping and the dogs that come through from both sides. So it, basically, you can hold anything at any time, at any angle, and still have a really good clamping force on it wherever you need it to be. And if all that isn't enough, this vise has a 15-inch mouth opening, and you can clamp some logs and other big things in here because it just keeps coming and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming. And this is the small version. The big version can clamp up to 24 inches. And you can get something all the way up to about there. That's a vice. That's, that's a really serious vice. I, I think I need some counseling. There you have it. Um, yes, I will have a video coming out here soon actually talking through and demonstrating some of the fun things that this can do and why this is so cool because it is an incredibly cool vise. I've wanted one on my bench. Um, do you need one of these? Absolutely not. Um, a regular end face vise is just golden. You really don't need anything more than a simple vise. Um, but sometimes if you find yourself doing a lot of small detailed items or organic shapes, uh, this may be the ticket for that. 
but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that more when we actually do the video. Um, I, I know I'm going to have lots of questions about, ooh, did I destroy my bench taking off so much material? And, and no, um, this is more than thick enough. It will withstand the forces that I put onto it, no problem at all. And I've wanted to get this so that I can show other forms of clamping and other methods. Um, so now I've got one of these that is going to make me very, very happy. So I hope you like it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, things I could have done better, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and I answer as many of them as I can possibly get to. So thank you for that. Putting questions down below really does help out the channel and helps us grow. So if you want to help out with that, hit the like, comment, share, subscribe, put comments down below. Just Comment down below, and thank you. That does actually help us out. Also, there are a bunch of names of people over here. They are the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons on Patreon or members here on the channel, people who have clicked that little join button down below, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer. You guys are the reason why I can get things like this and, and show how they work and what they do. So I hope you like that. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you can click the little description button down below. You know how that works. Or you can become a member here on YouTube and click the little join button. We do have special perks for both, and I think they'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. If the president has a vice president, then I have a vice, but what does that make me? Hmm.